tell the world. Hi, I'm Johnny. This is Johnny Likes, the show where I talk about movies that I like. Today, I'm going to talk about a film that I can't believe is only a year old. It's powerful, it's visually stunning, and is brutally violent. It's also the best Conan film that has nothing to do with Conan. Today, Johnny likes The Northman. The Northman is the story of Amleth, played by Alexander Skarsgård. He's a Viking who has vowed to avenge his father, rescue his mother, and kill his uncle. And while he works on that, we get to see a whole bunch of actors do a bang-up job. Ethan Hawke is Skarsgård's father. Nicole Kidman is his mother. Anya Taylor-Joy is his love interest. Bjork is a seer. And Willem Dafoe is a fool. Robert Eggers co-wrote and directed this, and he also did The Witch and The Lighthouse, and so far he has yet to miss. He's a stickler for historical details and knows how to use them well in his films. He tries to keep his period pieces historically accurate while also telling a thrilling story, and tries to incorporate as many of the mystical and spiritual aspects of the people as possible. This is his most gorgeous film to date, and that's no small brag. It's also incredibly and graphically violent. The violence is never glamorous, although it is at times thrilling. The raid on the village that happens about like 20 minutes into the movie is thrilling and also one of the most frightening things I've seen. It's like a, a messed up NFL team was set loose on like a high school football practice. Like what would you do if you had this coming at you on like just a normal Tuesday morning. You'd die. That's what you'd do. Or maybe you'd shit yourself and then die. The whole transformation ritual that the Berserkers do before the raid I just talked about is fascinating. And it feels right. In many ways, this film feels like a documentary. Like we've actually been transported to the time and are watching these events take place. In other ways, it's much more like a vision quest. It's not all gritty realism. There is plenty of fantasy stuff here. Witches, oracles, dreams, vision quests, that sort of thing. So, the look of the film. All of Ager's films have been easy on the eye to date. And this one is no exception. Much of this film takes place at night, where, for like much of human history, the only light was from the stars or fire. So the night in general is black and orangey-yellow looking. It looks like they did day-for-night shots, at least for a lot of the exterior stuff at night. Which means that they shot during the day and then altered the contrast and blackness levels in post-production to make it look like it was shot at night. It's well done, but once you kind of notice it, it is just a little bit distracting. You kind of can't unsee it once you see it. During the day, it's pretty much always overcast, and there's lots of lush green and brown and gray. We do get to see the sun a few times, and there is some snowfall, but when we do get these contrasts, they fit well into the color palette. We get the gritty realism combined with the hallucinatory, dreamlike, artistic shots and they play very well with each other. This is the role that Alexander Skarsgård was born to play. He's wholly believable as the single-minded brute bent on revenge. I've liked him ever since I first saw him in True Blood. Well, I would have first seen him in Zoolander, but I knew him from True Blood as Eric Northman, funny enough. And this could easily have been an alternate universe origin story for his character in that show. All of the actors I mentioned earlier were excellent in their roles. Nicole Kidman was great, especially later on in the film when we feel a little bit different about her character than we start off feeling. Ethan Hawke seems to have fully transitioned from playing the kind of young guy into playing more fatherly, elderly statesman type of roles. And he's made the transition very smooth. 
even though he's only six years older than Skarsgård, there's a big time gap between when we see the two actors, so it kind of works out. Willem Dafoe gets to be fully unhinged as the fool, and in my mind, that's the best type of Dafoe. And I think it's what made one of the things that made The Lighthouse work so well. Anya Taylor-Joy has perhaps the toughest role here. And she is mostly just here to give Skarsgård a reason to think beyond his need for vengeance. I am simplifying a little bit here, and her character is more than, I love my man and I will follow him until the end of time no matter what. And she's able to convey that nuance with ease. Bjork is fine. She's only here for like one scene and she just looks like she's making a music video. The simple framework of the story here works very well and allows Eggers to fit as much kind of folklore and mysticism as he reasonably can into the film. There were a few little twists to the story that I don't want to spoil here that made the revenge plot a bit more interesting. Eggers co-wrote the movie with a history scholar named Sion, or Sion, something, S-J-O-N. And it feels like they ripped the best parts out of, like, Niall's saga and other Norse mythology, and just kind of blended them in here. And I'm sure to, like, scholars of the era, it would be like watching Stranger Things, but for, like, Norse mythology. Now, I'm trash at history, but from what I've read... The movie is mostly historically accurate, which is cool. The historical details aren't pivotal to the success of the film, but it's nice to know that they tried. And it does lend to a feel of authenticity. At times, I found myself a little lost as to what was exactly going on with the kind of dreams and hallucinations and visions and what have you. On my second watch, though, I found it less confusing overall. I also found that for my second watch, that the pacing issues were kind of gone that I initially had. The valleys didn't lose me as much, and they made the highs feel higher. Or they made the peaks feel higher, if I'm going to do the analogy. I was pretty hyped for this movie, which I try not to do, because expectations can really ruin a movie. But nevertheless, I was excited to watch this. Unfortunately, it didn't initially live up to what I'd kind of hoped for. I think I was looking for more of an action-adventure, kind of no-brain movie, like 300. But after a while, and it had rolled around in my head, I kind of came around to it, and appreciated it for what it was, not for what I wanted it to be. So my advice is that if it doesn't click for you the first time you watch it, maybe give it a few months and give it a rewatch. That's what worked for me. This film is full of brutality, but it's also full of beauty. It is at times exhilarating, and at others, absolutely difficult to watch. It basically gets to have the best of both worlds, and I'm going to rate it a 4.25 out of 5. So if you like this, you should maybe check out The Witch, Robert Eggers' first film, kind of Anya Taylor-Joy's breakout role. It's another historically accurate, kind of fantastical... It's it's great. Check out The Witch. It's good. Apocalypto. Another brutal, I guess, historically accurate? I, I don't know about that one. It's actually got a lot in common with this film and just what it does. So if you like this, check out that or vice versa. Check out Conan the Barbarian as well. Uh, it's like a tame... Tamer, more fun version of this film. It's got actually quite a similar story as well. So, what would you rate this? What do you want to see me talk about? If you could let me know in the comments, that would be super duper. Also, while you're here, if you want to drop a like and subscribe, that would just be awesome. It's quick, free, and relatively painless. Plus, it like really helps me out, I think. Makes me feel good. Uh... All hail the mighty algorithm. Thanks for watching me talk about movies for a little bit, and you can tune in next time to see what else Johnny likes.